It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done, said Sidney, as the mob waltzed in madness while sharpening their axes on the wheel. It was a time to ask deep questions. Do we learn from our shame? Do we know our sins? How much is one responsible for all? How much are we all responsible for one? When life is said to be doggy dog, must we be dogs? Must we bow wow and bow down? Or must we rise? And how do we make sense of all the noise in the air? How do we hear ourselves think? How do we turn what we hear into art? For Marlowe, the height of art was the New York Metropolitan's production of Lulu, an opera by Albin Berg from Frank Vedekin's Lulu plays. Lulu sits for her portrait observed by Dr. Schoen, a conflicted newspaper publisher. When Schoen leaves, the painter tries to seduce her. Louise Brooks is pervasive in director William Kintridge's production anchored by his ink drawings. Said Kintridge, ink is the primary medium of the production. Ink drawings, and sometimes drawings translated into woodcuts or linocuts. Essentially, it's the vehemence of a black brush stroke, the idea of trying to find some equivalent visually to the violence of the opera. It's almost as if the ink becomes the black blood that is spilled throughout the production. The sense of a brush mark across a sheet of paper having the effect of a knife across flesh. Marlowe saw a news story that caught his attention. North Carolina woman buys freezer at yard sale. Body inside. What was forming was like some satirical opera from the Weimar era. Rise and Fall of the City of Mahagoni, libretto by Bertel Brecht, music by Kurt Weill. The body in the freezer reminded Marlowe of Leocadia Begbick. In the opening scene, stepping out of an abandoned fridge, leaned up next to a broken down truck to join Fatty the bookkeeper and Trinity Moses. They can't go forward. They can't go back. The law is on their trail. The indomitable Begbick decides they will stay and transform this scrap heap into a pleasure city where men from the gold fields can drink and whore and gamble. Winning, 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 pussy, pussy, pussy flashes above in neon. Oh, show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Marlowe had tuned into a frequency of a bygone era, Three Penny Opera. Mac the Knife sings Die Moritat von Maki Messer. Yes, the dashing highwayman crook was back in town with Tiger Brown. And once again, Tiger Brown would outbrown himself. Brown, the smell of the times. Berlin in 32, set in a future where the opening scene, a poodle scoots across a lush white carpet, leaving a streak of brown. Would brown seem too quaint in the age of gold? It had all gotten so gaudy, so bright. The screen looked like old candy. Rat poison looked like new candy. That's when Marlowe dialed back the color, took out the saturation, went black and white. It immediately felt more comfortable, with the lights dimmed. What inspired him? G.W. Pabst. In 1929, Pabst directed Pandora's Box. One review dubbed it a masterpiece of the silent era and a landmark work in the history of world cinema due largely to the riveting, red-hot performance given by Louise Brooks in the role of Lulu. Few can match Brooks's intensity and erotic allure. Pauline Kael called her Lulu the archetype of the voracious, destructive woman. Pabst portrayed Lulu as sympathetic, Alvin Berg less so. And there was the undercurrent of Jack the Ripper. And what a name, Shigelt, Lulu's father, who is not her father, who plucked her off the street. They reminisce about their street act. He plays accordion, she dances. It is indecent, but the audience isn't sure why. And we imagine the dance Lulu does on stage that we do not see because the scene was shot from the dressing room. We hear applause. We never see. We conjure in our minds. It is brilliant, and yet it is done to save money. In a perfect world, we transgress and do good despite our transgressions. 
In Love Token Alley, when the balls collide, the break doesn't always go your way. There is much to avoid, but you never know what you might find. One dime, take a chance. Mingle with prophets, poets, the mad, the ecstatic, the rabble-rousers, the beautiful, the bad, the rich, the poor, the unhinged anarchists, and hairless hounds hungry for a sugar cookie. Sure you heard at the bat of an eye it could all go south. The old quarter was lousy with small-time grifters and mangy chiselers and lone woofers and plug-ugly hoods and tom all alones who threatened to take your eye out with a pick. Sure you heard all that, but those are your neighbors. Better make friends if you plan to stay in the neighborhood. There was screaming on the left, screaming on the right, flying bottles, social unrest, political dystopia, wiggling snakes, clawing lobsters, everyone's armed. Pop, 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 another disgruntled worker. Pop, 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 another angry ex. Who knew the gun was loaded? Who thought it might go off? No excuse to cancel the party. Hey, we're all refugees from the big thud. The high and low together. What started out friendly got crowded. Now it was sharp elbows and teeth. Bravery wasn't always acknowledged. Truth not always appreciated. The floor could drop out from below you and you could be hurtled into space, whoosh, and charged with interest for the pleasure. Mars, freeze now, thaw later, just like taking a nap, and by the time you get here, we might have even found water. But back on Earth, in the cool part of the alley, you could feel the supercharged intensity of new art being torn out of the ether. Think of iconic Mr. Boots painted in Eve Klein blue. What a niff pussy cat. This spoke to everything about the wicked romantic underworld. Velvet language with barbed hooks, 